Hey yo, Antonio. In this video, we'll be comparing normal vision to cataract vision. For those that may not know, a cataract is a term that is used when the crystalline lens inside your eye begins to turn milky and opaque. There are many reasons for why this can occur, but the most common form of a cataract is what is known as the age-related cataract. Because a cataract interferes with the optics of the eye, it can lead to a series of symptoms such as blurred vision, loss of contrast, and a change in colour perception. But in the following examples, you'll get to see what I mean. But let's get right into it. Our first example takes place during a hot summer's day in Perth. We have with us a scarecrow in the garden dressed up as a lifeguard. I want you to pay attention to the shirt on both sides. On the left, the edges are crisp and defined, whereas on the right, the edges are faded. Another key difference can be seen when looking at the text on the shirt. On the left, we see great contrast between the red writing on the yellow shirt, whereas on the right, the reds are not as punchy. Next, we're at the park and there is a power grid standing in front of us. I really like this example because it shows an artificial object surrounding nature. Notice that on the right, we can see a difference in colour perception that is induced by the cataract. Due to the browning nature of a cataract, colours can appear more yellow than they really are. The bushes on the right seem to blend into one another, whereas on the left, it is relatively easy to spot where the plant starts and finishes. The unfortunate reality of a cataract is that every single person on Earth will develop a cataract as long as they live long enough. And it is widely known that sun damage, smoking and diabetes can accelerate its progression. So what is it exactly that's turning the lens cloudy you might be wondering? Think of it this way. The crystalline lens is a population of fibres living in a capsule. They have a pump system that allows them to move water in and out of the fibres facilitating essential nutrients. If, however, the system fails, then the fibres that keep the lens transparent turn opaque and light starts to scatter. This system is, however, under constant danger. Reactive oxygen species, which are known to cause damage to these structures, can be found lurking nearby. They can also be created by exposure to radiation, including ultraviolet, which is what we find in sunlight. Luckily, our body naturally produces antioxidants which can help protect the lens from structural damage. But when the balance is tipped in favour of the reactive oxygen species, you get what is known as oxidative damage. The more oxidative damage you have, the more cataracts you will develop. On to the next example. During the daytime, there is enough light available that despite the reduction in contrast, Reading familiar street signs is manageable, although not as easy. Signs that are really far away, like the green exit sign, may start to show some differences. You will, however, run into issues when looking at small changes in contrast. Take, for example, the KFC logo shown above. On the left, we can clearly see the two different shades of red behind Colonel Sanders, whereas on the right, the difference is harder to distinguish. I also want to take this opportunity to explain that cataracts behave differently depending on what time of day it is. This is the same footage, but shown at night time. You can see that the haloing effects are much more distinct, making the overall image noisier. I wonder what it'd be like to drive in these conditions. The thing that stood out to me the most was the glare caused by oncoming vehicles. I personally find LED headlights more disturbing and I'm sure many people suffering from cataracts would agree with me. Although age is the most common cause of a cataract, there are many other causes for it too. Take for example, traumatic cataract, which is caused by a bad whack to the eye, 
and drug-induced cataracts, which can commonly be found in those that are on steroid medications. Depending on where you have the cataract, there are different names for them too. Have it in the nucleus and you've got nuclear cataracts. Have it in the cortex and you've got cortical cataracts. Have it at the back and you've got posterior subcapsular cataracts. For the purpose of this video, I have focused on replicating nuclear cataracts because it is the most common form of the bunch. The most distinct characteristic of a cataract is that lights appear brighter than they really are. This is thanks to the light scattering properties of the damaged lens fibers we talked about earlier. How would cataracts behave in an indoor setting? This is a scientific paper that I've illuminated using a softbox at about 3 feet. With good enough lighting, the paper is well lit, and reading this isn't a problem. If, however, the lighting was bad, then you can see that reading becomes noticeably more difficult. When I introduce cataracts into the mix, you can see that despite having good lighting, there is a steep reduction in contrast. And having bad lighting just exacerbates the issue. From the clips we've seen today, I think it's safe to say that the effects of cataracts are the most noticeable at nighttime, particularly around artificial lighting. Seeing them side by side almost speaks for itself. But that just about wraps up today's video. If you learned something new, or at least found something useful, then yay, thumbs up to you. If you want to thumbs up back, then they'll be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.